This is the Philips EL3503 professional reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. Philips weren't known for doing very many in the way of professional machines, however they did make about three or four different varieties of um, high quality, high standard recorders. This particular one was used by the BBC. Although this particular machine wasn't used for the uh, productions in the radiophonic workshop, machines like this in banks of five to ten were used uh, the Radiophonic Workshop and the BBC is famous for the recordings of the Doctor Who theme tune, Stingray, and all the sorts of special effects created in the era of the Doctor Who series. Um, the machine itself, this one, was used by the Beeb, but uh, it was adapted for high speed recording and playback. Uh, instead of it being 7.5 and 15, this machine's been changed to 15 and 30 inches a second. The machine's fully logical control uh, can be remote, remotely controlled. Uh, the design of the machines also allowed you to be able to have pitch controls. Uh, this machine does not have pitch control built into it. Uh, it got simple functions here of record and playback and spool. So we press spool here and we've got full rewind and then we've got different, different levels of fast forward as well as rewind. The machine's getting on a bit, uh, it needs a good service. Um, for instance, these, this brake isn't working very well at all. Um, another, th another interesting feature about these machines, uh, this was purely for editing purposes, uh, for quick starts and stop times, is you've got a function key here. This key moves the pinch roller closer to the capstan. If I engage it, if I take that slap back off again, the idea is, is that when you now press play, it's instant, it's instant cut in time. Um, again, because the machine hasn't been used and serviced, it's not stopping properly, so I'll disengage that before I press the stop button. The recorder has three ferrite heads. Uh, these would probably be very early style heads of the ferrite cores. The idea is, is that the material that they are made out of is very, very hard and very durable meaning that the head wear is very slight, the frequency roll off will be very little and um, the performance is kept up higher for longer. Tape counter is an accurate tape time counter. The machine's counter is set to run at 7.5 inches a second when we press uh, play because this machine is set to run at uh, 30 inches a second, well at the moment sorry, it's set to run at 15 inches a second, it's given an incorrect time um, so if you put it from 15 to 30 inches a second, you can see then the clock sort of goes goes mad and it's not really counting anything properly. It's very hard to see on this picture, on this camera. But the little armature down here is actually half worn. Um, this indicates this machine had a, had a lot of use. I very much doubt though the heads have been replaced on this machine, just showing how durable the heads are. Where this metal pillar here is worn almost halfway through, the heads are in good condition. It's a little bit more obvious on this pillar here. Um, you can see there there's quite a large cut groove in there. Um, that should uh, that indicates this machine has had a lot of use and really those little armatures should be replaced if I can find them. It's unusual to see, especially for the, a BBC machine, uh, to have a unit with uh, BU modules in the machine. What we have here, we have the main power supply, the BIOS oscillators for the erasing of the tape and the BIOS frequencies for the uh, record head. We've got our left channel uh, record and playback amplifiers and our right channel record and playback amplifiers up here we've got selection between mono and stereo heads um, which heads are in operation channel 1 and channel 2 and then on the output stage we then got uh, the reproduction levels from the heads on both channels although we've got that here as well these are preset channels that we leave alone these ones would then be for the operator to be able to vary 
uh, depending on if they need to do real-time uh, volume checks whilst the recording is being made. Fortunately there's no sound of the, out of this tape recorder at the moment uh, because I'm missing quite a number of leads. Uh, the audio heads uh, from the record and raise heads leads I need, the Tushel connectors, the 13 pole connectors and the mains plug. At the moment I'm running this machine, the amplifier, from another Philips stage um, which has got the correct style of power connector on the back. Unlike most of the BBC versions of this tape recorder, uh, this one was portable or transportable. Uh, the machine was housed in a wooden case and inside it had a compartment underneath the lid. Inside the lid of the tape recorder we have these called spooling platters. These platters are designed to be used to tape that do not have any real cheeks. Um, it's very popular with the very early machines and uh, the German machines. Underneath the spooling platters we have another compartment where we keep things like the nab adapters, um, the AEG DINs if they were being used especially with the platters, the cables, unfortunately there's only one main cable here, there's supposed to be two and two audio cables a, um, a, and a interconnect cable for the for the tape recorder's logic. Then underneath here we've got some a seven inch reel and we've got what's called a AEG center. That would be normally used with the metal um, platters. Now if we move the base to show the inside of this machine it's um, everything's large like the capstan motor with the external rotor the same with the real motors which are also PAPS motors. The machine is very complex inside just for the logic alone. Uh, we have relay logic down here which feeds back to a, a, remote, a remote control facility down at the bottom there but everything on the, de on the main tape deck is very difficult to show there but everything's controlled very mechanically um, so for instance the tape tension is done mechanically by a small leather arm on the top which we see in half worn which operates a, a couple of springs and a couple of cables which then applies uh, backwards pressure via a felt belt that goes around the hub of the real hub adapter. It's a closer look at the mechanics for instance here we've got a um, solenoid uh, which operates when the tape is put into play mode uh, operates all these small fine cables which go down little pipes all this all this will need oiling uh, to get the machine to function correctly these machines started out in the early 60s uh, the original ones were valved although this version of the tape recorder is transistorized the valved ones were the ones particularly used in the um, radiophonic workshop I don't know where this one actually falls into the BBC, how it was used or when it was used.